Welcome back guys. So this is going to be the first episode where we're going to be doing some welding and fabrication on my new pneumatic lift. If you haven't seen last week's video where I debuted that, I'll put a link up above. But before we can get started, I want to get a vise mounted on this bench. Let's get going. You guys had some great ideas on different ways to mount this vise, and I'm not convinced that this is the best way to do it right here, but I had to do it because we got a lot of work this week and I needed a vise, so this is kind of just temporary for now. There, here are three marks. One, two, three. Now I just gotta drill them out. You guys mentioned mounting it on a stand or mounting it on like a receiver style setup. I really like the receiver style idea. I will probably end up maybe mounting a receiver underneath one of these legs right here and then mounting the vise to that and then I can remove it to get it out of the way if I need to. But for right now this is just a temporary thing. I'm just using a step drill bit and I'm punching a 3 8 hole down through it and I'm just using some 3 8 hardware so that we can get this vise mounted onto the bench and I can get using it. The whole top of this workbench is 8th inch plate, so it should be sturdy enough to mount the vise. Watch your ears guys, it's going to be loud. Get your ear protection on. But I also like the idea of having the vise mounted on a base, and then I can move the base throughout the shop wherever I want it. And when it's not in use, then I can tuck it in a corner, so I'm kind of torn. There. So if I want to make it narrow, so it doesn't take up a lot of room, I can run it this way. Yeah, here we go. We're in business. It broke off right there. Okay, so this is like a little stabilizer arm that snapped off. And it goes into the ground and these hold like hanging flower pots. Now I know this may not seem important, but ask your wife or your significant other if this is important. And to them, this is important. So we're going to make this a priority and get this done, bang it out, and then move on to the next project. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this in the vise, get it cleaned up, and get it ready to weld. So we've got to clean that weld area up there. We've got to clean that up there. Huh. See, so you can see where it's shiny, and it's rusted all around. So where it's shiny is where it broke. So obviously there was some water that got inside that weld and broke it, it looks like. But I think we can make this a lot better. What you do is you stomp on this to get it into the ground. But look how blunt that is. So I think if we put a little bit of a point on that, I think it would help help matters when you go to stick it in the ground. Whenever you're doing grinding operations, guys, it's always a good idea to have your safety glasses and hearing protection. So if you look right in here guys, what I've done is I've put a, a bevel, a little bit of a bevel on this piece here. So what that does is that gives us a place uh, that we can run the weld right into nice and deep. Now for this I'm going to be using my Blue Demon Blue Arc 160 inverter stick welder. Now this runs on 120 and 220, but today, just for the heck of it, we're going to run it on 120 and we're going to try a little experiment. So if you guys want to see a review on this welder, I'll put a link up above. But what we're going to do today is we're going to run this welder on 120. And it's as simple as plugging in this adapter that comes with it. And to show you in a real world application, I'm going to actually plug this into the circuit where all my shop lights are connected into. If you look up here, see that plug? That right there is going to power the welder now. That'll give you an idea of what you can do if you don't have a dedicated circuit. So now we'll fire it up. <laughs> you see the lights flashed a little bit. I don't know if this is going to work. It's, a good, it's just a test. So. so now you can see this goes all the way down to 15 amps. And it maxes out at 110. So 110 amps it will go up to when it's on 120 volts. When this is on 220, it goes up to 160. So the first rod I grabbed was, was an eighth inch 6011. So what you want to do is spool up your cellular apparatus, click on the app Miller Welds, and then click on Stick. We're going to be welding on mild steel. We're going to be welding with eighth inch 6011. 
and there you go right at the very top it says 75 to 125 amps we're going to be welding on DC electrode positive because it has the deepest penetration so we'll start out right around 75 or 80 amps get yourself a good welding jacket and I like to use a respirator when I'm stick welding Turn it up a little bit, guys. There we go. That's what we want, right there. I finished it out at eighty five. And again, we're still on 110 amps, and that's not a dedicated circuit. That's running off the circuit that runs my shop lights. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put in a little angled uh, brace just to help so this leg doesn't bust off again. So it's gonna be a little gusset plate, and I'm gonna cut it just out of this little piece of scrap plate that I've got laying around. So sticking with the theme of running on 120 versus 220, uh, I'm going to use my inverter based plasma cutter. This is a 50 amp plasma cutter. If you haven't seen the review on this, I'll put a link up above. I always recommend trying to keep things standardized in your shop. So as you can see, this has a standard welder plug on the end. By doing it that way, it allows you to use the same adapters that you use for the welder. So this is inverter based and it's dual voltage. So you can use this and plug it right into 120 volt power. But just like the welder, you're not going to be able to max it out to its full potential of 50 amps. As you can see, we're plugged into an extension cord. Now you want to keep that extension cord real short when you do this. And you want to make sure that your extension cord is a heavy duty one, not just a cheap flimsy one. So you can hear the fan come on. So let's see what this maxes out now. So according to this, it maxes out at 42. But that's way more than what we need. So somewhere around 30 and just to cut that plate out. Then we just grab the air out of the shop, hook that up, and we're good to go. You can see I'm right around 60 PSI for air. It is super hot in the workshop today, so rather than wear my heavy leather apron that I normally wear uh, doing this stuff, I'm going to use something a little bit lighter. It's a birthday present my mom got me, and I'm going to give this a try. I like it already. Oh yeah, much cooler than uh, leathers when it's hot out. I like it. it's all snaps. It's got snap closers around the wrist so you're not getting sparks up your arm. And it's made for welding so you know it's going to be fire retardant. Alright, let's do this. Now I could cut this on my metal cutting chop saw, which we'll be using that here in a few minutes. But this is just as quick to do it this way and then I don't have to mess with the uh, backstop on the saw. If you guys are wondering about any of the tools that I'm using, I'll put a link down in the description so you guys can check it out. There we go. You can see what I've done is I've beveled it just like we did on the other pieces and parts and that beveling just gives a place for the weld to go. That's all. This is my go-to stick welder. I just love the arc. I love how it restrikes. It's just buttery smooth and it also does lift start TIG. This is a lot of welder for not a lot of money. And you'll also see that running something at 90 amps continuously is different than just tacking it at 90 amps. Well, there's the limit, guys. We tripped the breaker. All right. So, let me... 90 was a little too hot anyways. Let's go to 85. There we go. That's why we do these things in experiment. Alright, so it looks like 80 is probably the limit on a 20 amp circuit. In my shop lights are probably drawing another 10 amps off this circuit. These are just real world tests, so if you guys don't have 220 volt power in your shop, then you know what to expect and how far you can push it. If you are on a 20 amp dedicated 120 volt circuit, you should be able to turn this welder all the way up to what we demonstrated when it was on 120. 
There, done. Squirted it with a quick coat of paint. You can see I even put a little bevel on this edge here. And I put a little bevel on the end of this so that they weren't blunt. Maybe if they weren't blunt before, it might have not broken off. Oh, good. Done. Till next year. Let's move on to the next project. All right, guys. I hate to do this to you. The video is already running like 10 minutes long. So we're going to have to continue this next welding project until next week. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I'll have the links down below. You'll probably already have an idea of what that project is. But it's pretty cool. If you want to know about any of the tools that you see me using, I'll have the links down in the description. You can check that out. And I get a lot of questions on where I get my consumables. If you click the tools that I use down in the link below, I have the consumables that I use for this plasma cutter right in there. And they're really cheap. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. New episodes every Friday. So be sure to hit the bell notification to be notified of that. Until next week, I'll see you then. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Come, come, come.